Mr. Sanders, the murder weapon was a toy figurine. How could you see this as a clock? You with your objections and your evidence. Just who do you think you are? Just answer the question, Sanders. I saw it there, okay? That's a clock. Your Honor, if I may. Yeah, Hansel? As the witness stated, this statue is indeed a clock. The neck is a switch. You just tilt it and it says the time out loud. As it doesn't look like a clock, I submitted it as a statue. My apologies. The only way Mr. Sanders could have known this statue-looking clock to hold the time was if he held it in his hand and tilted the neck. Clearly a contradiction as he previously stated he hadn't entered the apartment. Oh yeah. Prove it. Prove I went in there. I can do far better than that, Mr. Sanders. I can prove that you are the one who killed Sage Brownie. You struck them with the clock, and the shock of the boy triggered the clock's voice. Order, order, everyone. Continue, Martin. The sound must have left quite the impression on you, Mr. Sanders. Burned into your mind after hearing it as the clock struck your victim. This is why you were so certain about the time. Objection! What is the meaning of this? This is all baseless conjecture. Baseless? Hansel, just take a look at the witness's face. <gasps> oh. Can you elaborate, Mr. Sanders? Did you hit the victim with that clock? That, that day, I never. Look, the I, the, the clock, I heard. No, I mean, I thought. <gasps> Dang, dude, let's have some order up in here. Mr. Martin. Yes, Your Honor? You said the witness heard that sound from the clock. Got any evidence? Your Honor, the sound Mr. Sanders heard was most definitively this clock. A fact which is clear if you simply sound the clock here, now in this court. Oh, Your Honor, may I have the clock? Oh, um, yeah, okay. Ladybug, it's 8.25. Wow, what a weird way to say the time. Well, it is a tiki knockoff after all. So we heard the clock. What else do you have to say, Mr. Martin? Mr. Hansel, may you please reveal the current time? It's 11.25. Ah! As you can see, this clock is exactly three hours slow. Precisely the discrepancy between what Mr. Sanders heard and the actual time of death. So, Mr. Sanders, try and talk your way out of this one. <laughs> you forgot one thing. Do you? What does he have to say now? While well, me saying like that clock is running slow, it proves nothing. How do you know it was running three hours slow on the day of the murder? If you can't prove that, then you don't have a case. Oh dear, how am I going to prove this? There is truly no way of knowing what time it was that day. Yeah, Martin, we don't know it was three hours slow that day. Do you got any evidence? I... I am not sure, Your Honor. That means I can't let you prove this guy guilty. So the cross-examination is now over. I've come all the way down here to testify and look what happens. You treat me like a criminal. You lawyers are all slime. You almost had him. I only failed a case once and I promised it would never happen again. Especially with someone as important to me as Eddie Brownie. He's gonna be punished for the death of his partner and it's all because of me. But I can't just throw this away. No, I must continue on. Why was the clock slowed? Your Honor, I believe that I can prove that the clock was running slow on the day of the murder. Okay, let's see it then. Sage Brownie returned home from Paris one day prior to the murder. As we all know, the time difference between here and Paris is 9 hours. When it is 4pm here, it is 1am there the next day. The clock was not 3 hours slow, instead it was 9 hours fast. Sage must have not reset their clock before returning, and that is why when Mr. Sanders struck them with the clock, he heard it say one. Proof enough for you, Mr. Sanders. Order, order, dudes. Oh my god. Well, um, this didn't really go how I thought it would. Where's Sanders now? He was, uh, arrested and taken away, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Martin? Yes, Your Honor? You did a good job, my guy. Thank you, Your Honor. So that means we find Eddie Brownie? Not guilty! Yeah! Court's over, guys! It turns out that Frank Sanders was a common burglar. He posed as a clown selling toys to check and see when people were out of the house. That day, when Eddie came home to his apartment, the victim wasn't home. After he left, Mr. Sanders let himself in to do his dirty work. While he was searching Eddie and Sage's place, Sage returned home from work. Flustered, Mr. Sanders grabbed the nearest blunt object he could find. Still can't believe we won. Ugh, my life is over. Eddie, what's going on? We won the case. Oh, Martin, don't worry about me. I'll be dead and gone with Zane. Eddie, you're an innocent man. The case is closed now, but my sage is cold, man. Gone forever. Oh, dear. Thanks, though. I really owe you one. I won't forget this ever. Here, a gift for helping me out today. Why, thank you. Uh, 
Isn't this the evidence that actually I made this clock for them? I made two of them. One for me and one for them. Eddie, my man! Wanna go back to your place and binge keeping up with the Kardashians accompanied by a bag of Doritos? Yes. 